Hurry up, Clarice. The horses are frothing up. Well, there. snap it up, Paula. Hold still, baby. Well, we're going to be late. She never goes to Monte Gras. She squirts seltzer bottles. Watch her. And another thing, young man. Be sure that she's home by two. Remember, we're sailing in the morning. You just leave her to me, Mrs. Kendall. Mrs. Kendall? Oh, we're sisters. It's worrying that gives her that motherly look. Now behave yourself, or I'll come along as chaperone. Oh, why don't you, Paula? Go ahead, Paula. If you'd swing on a chandelier once in your life, maybe you'd forget this trip to the islands. Oh, don't be silly, Burton. I've got my work to do. Oh, Paula. Goodbye, goodbye. Mmm, me too. Oh, no. Thank you. <laughs> goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Crazy youngsters. As one old graybeard to another, what are you doing for your rheumatism? Burton, you came here only to settle my business. As your godfather, I have some rights, and you worry me, Paula. We'll stick to business. All right. All right. Here's a bill of sale for the house and furnishings. Mm -hmm. Sign here and here. Yes. Oh, by the way, will this forwarding address reach you all right? Just Miss Paula Kendall, care of American Medical Research, Haiti? Yes, that'll reach me. Over and above traveling expenses, you have 5,000 left. I'll draw on that as I need it. <laughs> well, who's the lady? Oh, that's my little Paula. And Paula, this is, uh, what's your name? McMasters. I never heard of you. Stop it, stop it. Time you two were in bed. Why, Paula. Oh, uh, well, I didn't mean... Come here, come here. Now, you'll just have to go. That's all there is to it, mister. Please. Well, well where'd the man go? The nice man. <coughs> Where's the nice man? Oh, Clarice. <coughs> come on, nice man, come on. What is it with me, Paula? Every time I meet a nice man, poof, he disappears. Now, Clarice, <laughs> where have you been? Look, I brought you something. See? Thank you. Now, baby. Are you sure you didn't get in any trouble? Oh, no, no, no trouble. First, we all went to the Oglethorpe. We all went to the Oglethorpe for supper. Yes. And then we got dancing at the Bell Tavern. And then we got married. And then we all went for breakfast. What did and, you say? And then we all went for breakfast. No, before that. We got married. Oh, Clarice, you are married. I know, right before breakfast. Clarice, you were married six months ago in New York. Don't you remember Mr. Michael Andrews? Where, where is Mike? I want to talk to Mike. I'm taking you out of the country to get you away from me. Now you sit up here. You know, all this yelling ain't helped me get to sleep any faster, Paul. I'm tired. Oh, Clarice, this is bigamy. Was it that, uh, that, that Mr. McMasters? Mr. McMasters? Oh, no. No. Well, who was it? Who do you think? Who do you think, Paula? A millionaire. A millionaire. Clarice. Oh, Clarice. Oh, dear. Oh. Uh, Mr. Williams, please. Oh, Burton, Paula, what can they do to a bigamist? A bigamist? Well, can they send her to jail? Not more than ten years. Oh, Burton, you've got to come over here right away. Well, it's just around the corner. Can't you run? Rush, hurry. Miss Kendall, please. Uh, I'm Miss Kendall. Indeed. You look surprisingly well for the morning after a Mardi Gras. What's that? I beg your pardon. My name's Howells. I represent the man you married last night. I'm afraid there must be some mistake. Exactly the way I feel about it. Uh, that's why I'm here. Oh, Mr. Howells, no. please take this chair. Thank you. Uh, where is that, uh, the Mr. Um, what is his name? Your husband's name, young lady, is Stephen Cormack. You don't mean Stephen D. Cormack. Stephen Dorchester Cormack. He left an hour ago on his yacht for Valparaiso. Oh, but he can't. I've got to talk to him. Doesn't he realize what happened? I'm here to handle the matter for him. Oh, but you can't. He's the only one that can do anything. Miss Kendall, I've been handling Mr. Cormack's mistakes for years, ever since his wife died. I believe I'm competent. In the case of the usual broken heart, I'm accustomed to paying $3,000. Since this is marriage, I'm willing to go to five. You can have your check immediately, and I'll handle the divorce. Divorce? Why, yes. 
We're ready to let you sue on the grounds of desertion. We believe that would be the fairest way to handle the matter. All right. Excuse me. Oh. Oh. Burton, this is Mr. Howell. He's ready to arrange a divorce. How dare you? How dare I what? Burton. You don't know who you're dealing with, my man. Miss Kendall is a lady. She married her husband because she loves him, and it didn't you? Well, you, you know perfectly well that Why, I... Why, of course I do. What do you mean by trying to buy her good name, to, to break up her marriage? Why, it's insulting. If I were 20 years younger... Burton, stop it. You, you know this is the only way out. No, my dear, I can't allow you to sacrifice yourself. I have Please. a feeling... I have nothing more to say to you. Well, that's a relief. You have my offer. When you will see me again, without this belligerent little gentleman, I shall be waiting at the ambassador, Miss Kendall. Mrs. Cormack. Well, now you've done it. Hey, I haven't I? And just in the nick of time. Did he see Clarice? No. Then give me a hand. We've got to get her out of here. Burton, have you gone mad? Howells is ready to give us a divorce. Not if I can help it. Suing for divorce is the surest way of sending Clarice to prison. Why? Clarice has committed a crime. She's married two men. One, two. We can't touch last night's marriage because that would show her to be a bigamist. And off she'd go for ten long years. Then what can we do? Get hold of husband number one, Michael Andrews. We've got to get that marriage annulled. Do you understand? Well, I'm beginning to. Then help me get her on her feet, down to the boat and out of the country. Burton, she can't leave the country. Howells will get suspicious. No, that's our only piece of luck. He thinks you're the one that married Cormac. You'll stay behind. Oh! Burton! You're not asking me to act as that man's wife. You'll have to. I can't. I don't know how. Well, it won't take any experience, Paula. He's out of the country. You'll never see him. Well, even so, I... Oh, I, I, I... Do you want to see this child go to jail? No. Well, then get her bags. Call a taxi. Mr. You don't stop flirting with me. I want to call a cop. Oh, no, cop. I'll get a taxi. You remember Uncle Burton, don't you? Yeah. Now, my dear. Well, she's gone. For the time being, she's safe. Now, who are you? Well, um, You're Clarice. You're very gay. You want to dress like her? Come now, what else? Well, I'm going to call Mr. Howells. And I'm going to tell him I'm ready to take my place in the Cormac home and be a model wife. You're going to do everything you can to prevent them from starting a divorce. That would be fatal. Yes, but how far is Valparaiso? Now, don't worry about Cormac. Before he even thinks of returning, I'll get hold of Andrews and we'll have our annulment. Yes, but are you sure that you're positive you can get it? For any one of a number of good reasons. Andrews may be slightly colored or insane. But he isn't. Well, then we'll pay him to write a letter that will serve as evidence that the marriage was a fraud. That doesn't sound quite within the law. It isn't. Neither is posing as Mrs. Cormack. But that's just what you're going to do. Oh. Now, Paula, make that call. Burton, you're a very dishonest old gentleman. Paula, you're practically an adventurous. Oh, dear. Ambassador Hotel. Yes? Miss Kendall? I beg your pardon. <laughs> Mrs. Cormack. Are you ready to accept my proposition? I insist on taking my position as Mrs. Cormack. You intend to take up your residence in the Long Island home? Very well. Then let me tell you something. No. How many? Nevertheless, when you're ready to take me home, I'm ready to go. At a girl, Paula. I'm the mother of two children. Alfred! The children I was telling you about. Patricia, Henry, this is your new mother. How do you do? We're going to be good friends, aren't we? No. no. Well, uh... oh. Alfred, what is this? Oh, uh, excuse me, sir, but we, we were just preparing a reception for Mrs. Uh, Cormack, so to speak. Oh, please don't bother. I don't want you to make a fuss over me. No, ma'am, we won't. That's right. I just want to take things as they come. No, ma'am, we won't let you do that either. We're not going to let you take a thing. 
so you can get right out and start looking for some other poor old man to be fuddled. What's that? Try moving into someone else, move out with his bankroll. But you won't do it here. Why, you... Here we are, blackjack. In my opinion, the finest two-year-old in the country. I don't want your opinion on horses. I want your help for Clarice. Let's stick to the point. I'm right on the point, Mr. Williams. You see, this year, Blackjack will be carrying all the smart money, of which, uh, personally, <laughs> I haven't any. Oh, pardon me. We're perfectly willing to pay you. $1,000? Pardon you? I adore you. It's going to be a pleasure to help Clarice. Now, uh, what was it you wanted me to do? Just write that letter. <clears throat> Date it before your marriage. Tell her you're a duke and willing to throw your entire fortune at her feet. <laughs> Funny, I might have told her that very thing, too. Uh, by the way, who did you say she married? Stephen Cormack. D? D. And they've accepted her sister Paula into the call. Count on that much longer. The children resent her. They'd do anything to get her out of the house. Why, well, it's going to be a great pleasure to help Clarice. Yeah. But do, what about the letter? I'm going to give Paula a letter personally. But the, the, the money's right here. You want to bet on that horse, don't you? Bet on it, Mr. Williams. I'm going to buy it. I beg your pardon. I would like to see Master Henry and Mistress Patricia, please. Hello. Do you mean us? I do. <clears throat> yes, you in private, please. Huh. Sure. Come on in. Never mind. I won't be long. Michael. D. D. Dimitri. Andrews. I've come to warn you. What? Shh. You have a leech in this house. A viper. A scorpion. You from the exterminating company? Of course not. I'm talking about that woman your father married. She's this. Before she wrecks your life as she wrecked mine, get rid of her. Good day. Hey, wait hey. a minute. One second. Do you know her? No. Why? She was dazzled by me. She followed me to the Alps, to the Riviera, to the Monte Carlo. Uh, she would still be following me. No. You mean it? But she took every penny I had. She'll be ruining you, too. Get rid of her. Good day. Uh, Don't go! Uh, look, uh, we can't get rid of her, but you can help us, Mr. Andrews. You said she followed you. If I wished it, one snap of my fingers and she'd come running like a little poodle. Would you consider uh, snapping them just to help us out? I never wish to see that lady again. Good day. We're willing to pay you. What, sir? Don't be offended, Mr. Andrews. He didn't mean it. Oh, I just thought he might get her out of the house. We couldn't expect him to do it for nothing, well, could we? I could never do such a thing for pay. No, of course not. Certainly not. I would do it only for revenge and perhaps to get back what the lady took from me. We'll give it to you. Every penny of it. The $30,000, my dear children. They are the least. $30,000? I don't think we could give you that much. Well, young man. Same with me. I don't think I could ever face her again. Good day. Hey. Oh, oh, well, uh, we'll get the money. That is, if you're sure you can dazzle her. Is she different from any other woman? I dazzle them all. No. Pat, do you feel it? Huh? Yes, I think I do a little. But don't go by me. We can go by the lady herself. Just tell her that Michael Dimitri Andrews is here. She'll rush down and I'll give you whatever proof you want. If you'd hold her hand, that'd be something. I shall hold the lady's hand. And pinch her cheek. Um, would you sort of put your arm around her and, and whisper in her ear? I should even kiss the tips of her fingers, all five of them. That is, if it's a deal. It's a deal. If you can do it, we'll get the money. Send for her. Uh, Alfred? Yes, sir? Oh. Uh, there's a Mr. Michael Dimitri Andrew. I understand, sir. Hmm. Is there some way you can watch? In the dining room, sir. Oh, I, I beg your pardon. He's right. Come on and we'll show you. Mr. Andrews, if you've come to give me the letter, where is it? 
Mr. Andrews, you promised me that letter. You need $30,000 to buy a horse? It's an out-and-out out steal. But, Mr. Andrews, what has Clarice got to do with a horse? I won't let you swindle those children. Look out there, look, look out there. They're watching us from the dining room. I don't care. I won't let you swindle those children. Mm -hmm. If you do as I tell you, I'll get my horse, you'll get the letter, the kid will get rid of you. I won't do it. Oh? <laughs> you won't do it, and Clarice will get ten years. Oh. I'm smiling. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's better, that's much better. Now, come on, loosen up. Convincing? It was elegant, but... Oh, oh, a credit? No, it's just the money. There'll be a slight delay. Oh, don't let that worry you, my dear children. Just let me have half tonight. The rest can wait. Five or six years? You see, we'll have to pay you out of our allowance. I didn't ask for a pension. I leave you with your new mother. Oh, uh, I'm sick about this, Mr. Andrews. But we'll find a way. We'll do anything. Why, Mr. Andrews? Still here? <clears throat> yes, uh, we've introduced ourselves. And from what your little daughter tells me, I'm afraid our dinner engagement is off. It's nothing. Nothing serious. As long as little Patricia is so ill, I wouldn't consider taking her mother out of the house. I think she understands. Oh, wait a second. Don't go. Mr. Andrews, conditions might improve. Mrs. Cormack, for the sake of us all. Now, children. I'm sorry about that. Well, that's all right. Let's try being friends. If it's advice or sympathy you need, or a shoulder to cry on, well, here it is. Thanks, lady, but you can keep your shoulder. Be a little more considerate, young man. I was just trying to help your sister. She's not feeling very well. You needn't bother. If nothing, money won't cure. Money? Money. Well, there are all sorts of ways of getting money, if it's for a good cause. It's for a good cause, all right. A very, very good cause. A downright crusade, that's what. Well, then, by all means, let me join up, and I'll help you get it. Can you? If we stick together. We'll stick closer and gum, lady. That is, until we get the dough. Then it's simply a matter of liquidating your assets. Our what? Boat, furs, jewelry, cars. That's $10,123.32. Well, that's a start. What do you mean, a star? We've sold everything we've got. Except a couple of old ginger ale bottles. Oh, my, oh, my. What have you got to my, oh, my about? You haven't given up anything. I know, but... Well, I'm as worried as if I were in trouble myself. Haven't you any old Lambros or something? I'm afraid that if we had half that money by tonight, I know where I'd get the rest of it. You do? I'll look around and see if I can't find an emerald. Stop here, please. I'll get that money and be right home. If she gets that money, she won't have any home. If. All right, driver. Hey. Well? What happened? Well, I was walking down Fifth Avenue, and there in the gutter, what do you think? An emerald. No. Let's see. Wow. We ought to have thought of looking in the gutter. Oh, she's only kidding, aren't you? Sure, she got this from Burton Williams. Who's he? Oh, um... He, uh, well, he's just a man over the American Security Bank. I borrowed the money in your name. Gee, thanks, Mrs. Er, uh, thanks a lot, lady. That's all right. Uh, were there any messages for me? No, I don't... Sure, uh, Mr. Andrews called. Everything's all right now. He's coming over to take you to dinner. Oh, I'd better rush. Good evening. Oh, hello. Come in. We want to see you. Miss Patricia. I'm so happy to hear you've gotten over your illness. Every penny of it. <clears throat> Fifteen thousand, correct? Mr. Andrews, how long do you think it will be before, you know, you snap your fingers? We don't want to rush you any, but we can have the rest of the money in two or three days. Uh, two or three, uh, just let me see. Today she's weakening, tomorrow she'll be anxious. Perfect. In three days she'll be willing to follow me to the end of the earth. Hot diggity, right on schedule. Yes, but what are you going to do when you get her there? Drop her. Shh. 
Mr. Andrews, do your best to do your worst. The lady will come home completely dazzled. Ah. Dinner at the Ritz, the opera, and dancing at the Rainbow Room. Delightful. Say. Not until she leaves for good, I won't. What chance has she got? Pop will get our cable tonight, and in 24 hours he'll be home, and we'll have the rest of our money. Maybe. No maybe about it. Wait till he sees her with Andrews, eating at the Ritz, going to the opera, dancing at the Rainbow Room. Dazzle. George. Hello, Mr. Cormack. The car's right over here, sir. That's the boy. Hey. Hello, Paul. Hello. Oh, 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 hey. <laughs> Hello, Pat. Boy, we oh, glad Pat, to see you. See you. <laughs> Whoa, wait a minute. What's all this affection? We've decided you're a man that needs help. Now, what are you two politicians after? A new yacht? Or did you stumble across something at a store window? Oh, no. Don't get us wrong. It's that woman. Well, well, it's a pleasure to welcome you, sir. Thank you, Alfred. Is Mrs. Cormack home? Oh, yes, sir. She came in just half an hour ago. Well, will you tell her? Uh, let me get her. All right. Come on, Steve. <clears throat> oh, here, here you are, Alfred. Uh, yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, Mrs. Cormack. Yes? There's a gentleman here to see you. Oh, tell Mr. Andrews I'll be right down. Just as you say. Oh, Steve, don't sit down. Stay on your toes. No, yes, yes, of course. <clears throat> She'll be down in a jiffy. Thank you. Let me help you. She's fainted. As gracefully as Pavlova. Uh, that was before your time. She's really very lovely. That's a beautiful mouth and those eyelashes. They're real. Well, aren't you going to do something? I, I should, shouldn't I? Get uh, some help. Get some water. Easy with enough. Hurry up with that water. We've got to bring her too. Yes, by all means. I'd like to meet her. Say, Steve, uh, didn't you meet her when you married her? Why, yes, of course. I, but I met so many people that night. It was all a little hasty and uh, vague and hazy. Sounds like you got married in a fog. A high fog. They're bad in New Orleans. Hello. Hello. I'm Mr. Cormack. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm... Mrs. Cormack? Yes. How do you do? How do you do? Silly of me to faint like that. Oh, it was beautiful to watch. I liked your eyelashes. They flutter. I don't think I ever fluttered before. You know as little about yourself as I do. I'm afraid, well, maybe that's right. Well, then, let's both find out what you're like. We'll, uh, we'll go somewhere and have dinner, maybe. She can't. She's got a date. Oh. Why, Patricia, what a silly notion. I can't spend the evening at home. You were going to sit around all night with your coat on? Oh, it was chilly. That's probably why I fainted. I better go up and rest. Yes, of course you're tired. I tell you what, I'll order dinner. And we'll have it together quietly in your room. We've got some important things for you to do. Since when do I have to do important things? Since we decided you're a helpless old man. Just forget that they ever said that. Go to bed. What? What? Run along, you're growing children. We're Cormac, and you said we got to stick together. Yes, I know. We'll stick together some other time, but <clears throat> not now. 
Go ahead. Remember, it's the hours before 12 that count. Steve, we got to talk to you alone. You don't know oh, what's been going on. Oh, this is no time for talk. It's your homecoming. It calls for celebration. You're tired. I'm fine. We celebrate. I'll dress. Won't be a minute. I want to speak to Mr. Andrews. We'd like to speak to Mr. Andrews. Mr. Michael Dimitri Andrews. Uh, of course it's the same man. Get off the line. Hello. I've got... Get off the line, you! I've got to talk to Mr. Andrews. We've got to talk to Mr. Andrews. Uh, but who wants to speak to Mr. Andrews? I do. We do. Now, look, we've been waiting here for... Will you please get off the line? But he's left the hotel. Good. He's on his way up here now. How long ago did he leave? He, he left for Chicago. 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 Illinois. Burton Williams, please. Oh, why must he be eating at a time like this? Don't tell me he was hungry. Well, do you know where he went? What restaurant? Uh... Have you the phone number? Oh, well, do you know the address? Oh, uh, just a minute. Uh... Fluttering and fainting. Why, she's got Steve half ruined already. He hasn't got our resistance. He's weak-minded. One look at Andrews. Mm, 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 mm. Ah, would give your father strength, unquestionably. But Andrews is gone. Oh, and it's me brother-in-law, Grogan. Him that's a private detective with the man to bring him back. Get Grogan. And until he finds Andrews, it's up to us to keep Steve from falling. If we have to hold him up with our bare hands. That's right. Supervisor, I'm not trying to be difficult. I merely asked information if... Well, never mind. I'm not upsetting any plans you've made. Oh, no. No. Uh, where should we dine? The Ritz? Waldorf? Oh, I'd prefer layman's health food and vegetarian lunch. Table for two. Roll your own, mister. Oh, thank you. Excuse me, ma'am. For a cup of coffee, could I tell you fine upstanding citizens, one of the most remarkable oh, no, incidents... Please. Well, if you'd only bear with me for a few moments, why... Some other time. Burton. Here he is. Well, I guess she means me, Stephen Cormack. <coughs> oh, dear, dear, dear. Don't, uh, don't let me interrupt you, Mr. Uh... Burton Williams. Uh, would you mind getting me something to eat? I'd like some steak, some potatoes, and some chicken, a little turkey, some soup and dessert. I'll, um, I'll get a little of everything. Excuse me. Oh, Burton. Keep calm. You're doing fine. It's not how I'm doing. It's Andrews. He disappeared. Now you keep calm, please. But he can't do that. I'll find him. I'll get him and bring him back here. Don't you be afraid. Well, it's not Andrews I'm afraid of. Cormac, but he thinks you're his wife. We haven't a thing to worry us. We? Well, it'll only be for a week, a few days, maybe. Burton. But he won't know. I mean, you'll get used to it. You want me to get used to living in a house with a man who thinks he's my husband? No, no, that's impossible. Come on, let him find out about Clarice. We'll run for it. Oh, no, we can't. We can't. Well, then what? Burton, you've known me for a long time. Do you think I could uh, take the chance? Well, you're practical, too. I am. I'm sensible and practical. Got a good level head on your shoulders? Yes, sir. Just hold tight. You'll win through. I'll hold tight. I'll win through. I'll do it. Chicken and turkey were made of spinach. So I bought hamburgers. They're made of vegetables. <laughs> well, nothing here is what it seems to be. Congratulations. Thank you. I've always hoped that some fine man would come along for this young lady. You're not going. Well, I have my work to do, and after all, your husband is your job. Oh, Burton! Goodbye. Oh, goodbye, goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye. Uh, thoughtful Codger. <laughs>
Good night. Good night. Like some help? Oh, yes. If, um, if you could shove this against there. Mm -hmm. That's easy. Like that? Yes, thank you. That'll do. For tonight. Good night. Good night. Darling, these three are my choice. Says the Isles of Greece are uh, intoxicating. Old Normandy is quaint and the South Seas are glamorous. What do you think? I think Long Island is glamorous. Oh, but the place is infested with children. We can't be a real, proper, respectable couple without a honeymoon. Oh, I, I can't go on a honeymoon with you. Oh, I can't very well go by myself. I'd be conspicuous. We can't leave here. There's your work. You've just settled down for plants. Put new life in the whole organization. Well, then, we'll combine business with pleasure. I'll put Cormac's patent leathers on every barefoot native we meet. Come on, what do you say? When do we leave? No. Why? Oh, just no, that's all. Well, is it... Oh, be please. No. Is it because we've only known each other a week? Hasn't that been long enough? It's been a lifetime. The kind of a life I never thought I'd live. And the kind of a life you don't like. Is, is that it? Oh, no, it's, it's been exciting. It's been fun. It's been, well, it's been happiness. Why can't we stretch that week into years? Forever. Why not? Now, just a minute. I'm the one that's asking the questions. Well, just this once, let me answer them. I want to see the Isles of Crete. I want to see old Normandy, the glamour of the South Sea. And I want to see them with you. And I'm going to say so, no matter what happens. Nothing's going to happen. Mr. Cornwall, you're a darling. Howells is expecting these contracts at the plant. Very good, sir. <clears throat> hello, hello, hello. Well, uh, what's the matter with you two? Feeling feverish? It's not us, Steve. We want to talk to you about her. No. Oh. You think she's pretty nice, don't you? Well, uh, conservatively, I do. Yeah. You've got to admit she's been the making of you, Pa. <laughs> I am a different man. Well, the whole house is different. She's been swell. And she's awfully pretty, too. Well, I've been hoping this would happen. I haven't been any too good a father since, well, these past few years. But now this place is happy. Now it's a home. I feel, I feel alive. We're all together again, and she's responsible. It was pretty important that you like her. And I'm glad you do. Uh, yeah. I like her fine, but 
Go on, tell him, Hank. Well, I like her fine, too, only we know a man who says... That... Yes? Well, he says he can lure her, sort of. He says he can run away with her to the ends of the earth. Well, that's quite a statement, isn't it? Who is he? A gentleman by the name of Andrews. All he has to do is snap his fingers, and she comes running like a poodle. And he says if we can be up at the Red Swan Inn by midnight tonight with $15,000, well, we'll never see her again. And you were going to get this money and give it to him? Oh, we can't get it. And you wouldn't want to give it to us, would you? Me? Not a cent. Okay, we'll call the whole thing off. Of course. What are you worrying about now? Hmm? Oh, nothing, nothing. Not going through with it now. Even if he does guarantee results. Sure, it isn't worth the money. Even if she would have gone away with him. Yeah, I'd like to go on liking our lady. Not even wondering if she would have. No. No, not even wondering. Yes, sir? Oh, um, oh, Alfred, would you please ask Mrs. Cormack to come down? Certainly, sir. Fifteen thousand dollars. A snap of the fingers. <laughs> A fine pair of meddlers you turned out to be. Well, uh, in the beginning, it was just to save you from her. Why do you think I want her to be saved? She's everything I've ever wanted. She's beautiful. She's gracious. She's honest. She's left, sir. Dear Mr. Cormack, please don't be offended at my leaving so suddenly. My aunt in Poughkeepsie is dangerously ill. No matter what happens, I like you very much. That's all. Huh. Yes, no matter what happens to her aunt, she still likes me very much. Why, that makes everything all right. Sure, here we are worrying, and all the time she's taking care of her aunt. I guess that Mr. Andrews isn't as good as he thought he was. There you are. You can give that to your Mr. Andrews. You can finish the deal. Steve, what are you going to do? I'm going upstairs and laugh myself sick. Gee. I didn't think he'd take it that hard. You could have seen he likes her. Pop hasn't made a mistake since she's been here, has he? No. Well, maybe we went a little too far. Don't say we. You ruined everything. Pop will go into another fog again. And maybe meet another lady. Yeah, and she might be a thousand times worse. Of course she will. She couldn't be any better. There won't be any other lady. This one's staying. I'm going to ask her myself, personally. Won't do any good. Andrews or have her so fascinated, she mightn't even listen to you. Say, I can be pretty fascinating myself. Hello, where is everybody? What kind of a place is this, anyhow? Hello, surface! Where are you? Is everybody dead around here? Well, nobody died recent, huh? But I ain't promising nothing. Never mind that. Have you any word for us? Well, I'd say just bothersome. No, no. I'm Henry Cormack. Is there any message for me? No. No message for Patricia Cormack either? No. But I got a note here for Hank Cormack. Well, what is it? I'm Hank Cormack. Then don't falsify that register. Mr. Michael Dimitri Andrews wants to know when you're going to arrive. Up in 703. Way up on the seventh floor? Shucks, no, the first. Come in. Mr. Mr. Andrews. Andrews. Mr. Andrews. Mr. Hello, Patricia, boss. Uh, is she here? Room 704, as per agreement, COD. Now look, Mr. Andrews, if it was too much trouble getting her here. Think nothing of it, my boy. On an enterprise like this, I pour out my very soul. Oh, we don't want you to strain yourself any, Mr. Andrews. You have to check, no? No. The point is, Mr. Andrews, we're asking you, please, not to dazzle that lady anymore. Keep the money you've got. Only go away. The deal's off. <laughs> you must be joking, my dear children. This is no such deal. You must understand, you can, you can stop the ocean waves from waving. You can stop uh, Niagara Falls from falling. But you cannot stop this lady from running away with me. Do you mean it? Of course, Patricia. 
Our deal must continue. Nothing doing. Let's get her out of here. Impossible, my dear boy. Well, don't you make a move to stop us. I won't make any move. I'll stay right here like this. I'll do nothing but think and wish that she runs to me. She can't resist. She must run to me no matter what you do. Stop looking at him, Pat. I don't want any trouble with you. She doesn't feel it. We've still got a chance. Come on. You're in terrible trouble. Peg, Pat, come back here. Peg, Pat. It's all right, lady. Put those bags down. Give me my things. Put my things down. Now, I'm not leaving. I, I can't. We understand, lady. It's that guy, Andrews. He's got you weak and helpless. It's the same with every woman he meets. It's not your fault. But now that we've settled with him, you can come home, can't you? You've settled with him? Uh-huh. Well, we'll leave in a moment. Just let me go to my room. Watch her, Pat. It's Andrews. He's luring her back. Peg! Oh! Can't you steal yourself against that man? Please, until we get you out of the door. Let, Pat, let me go. Just come back. I mean it. You've got to excuse us for doing this, lady, but it's for your own good. Grab her legs, Pat. I'll get her around the neck. She'll come out alone. You've got to give me that letter. Oh, you don't know how it feels. Oh, don't I? Well, how would Edison feel if he didn't invent the electric light? How would Columbus feel if he didn't discover America? Well, without blackjack, that's how I feel. Well, all that's nothing to how you feel when you're in love. Oh, don't you understand? I love that man. You? You? Oh, Paula, well, do you think that Michael Dimitri Andrews would come between two people in love? Yes. You hurt me. himself. I've got it. Listen, Paula. You can help Clarice. You can get your letter. You can go away from here. I ask for nothing. Nothing? Except the key to the house. Well, don't get worried now. I won't take a lot of things. Just a couple of vases or a carpet or... You'll do no stones. such thing, Mr. Andrews. Now behave yourself. People go to jail for robbery. Well, don't worry. Now listen, darling. Listen. I know a Hungarian lawyer by the name of Baxter. Well, to him such things are nothing. Nothing at all. Remember just before I got married to Clarice? When that bookmaker got hurt so badly, remember? Well, I, I was definitely in the wrong then until Baxter pleaded insanity. And the year before that, darling, I... Uh, went... He pleaded insanity and mm -hmm. you were acquitted? Yeah. Well, it's a matter of court record, my word of honor. Oh, Mr. Andrews. <laughs> oh! Well, then, then you will get the key? Mm. Well, that's great. You'll go to town right now. Oh, Mr. Andrews, definitely, definitely. Oh, that's good. Gee, there's no oh. place for you. Now, wait a minute. Don't get excited. Uh, be calm, Pop. Now, listen. Listen, Steve. She's not going through with it if I have to commit murder. <gasps> murder? Steve, you can't go around killing people. Well, she isn't here. Andrews isn't here. Honest, Pop, she went to Poughkeepsie like she said. There's nobody in Andrews' room. What room? 703 on the first floor. Oh. Steve. Oh. Now you've done it. Oh. Well, what do we do? He'll murder him. Al, Steve's gonna kill a man. Mr. Andrews? Mr. Carmack? Yes. I've been wanting to talk to you for quite some time. Yes, I've been looking for a chance to talk to you. Splendid. We can settle this whole matter as gentlemen. As gentlemen. That's right. Man and a woman! Pop killed him! Ah! Uh, murder? Yes! yes. Oh, come, on. Come, on. Three. come on, hurry up. Come on. Come on. Steve, you can't murder him. It's again the rules. What? What? Oh, Paula, go away. No, sir. Now, you sit up here and listen. I've got the most amazing news. All right, oh. all right. Turn your back. I'll get into my robe. 
here. Don't mind me. After what I've been through, life holds no terrors. The police have arrested Andrews. The police? When? Last year when he married Clarice. Isn't it lovely? Last year. Paula, please go away. Oh, but he was acquitted. Pleaded insanity. Burton, don't you understand? A judge and a jury said Andrews was insane at the time he married Clarice. Paula, you call up the oddest hours. But isn't insanity one of the good causes for annulling a marriage? What's that? Isn't insanity one of the causes for annulling? I heard you the first time. Why, of course it is. That's all we need. I'll file the annulment papers in the morning. Oh, Burton, I've won. I I'm finished. I'm free. And when Clarice gets back, she'll be free. She's coming back? Oh, yes, I wired her days ago, as soon as we made our deal with Andrew. She's on the plane now, gets here tomorrow night. But, Paula, you understand, don't you, that this annulment makes Clarice the real Mrs. Stephen Cormack? Because when she married him, she was a single woman. Of course. Oh. Clarice is Steve's wife. Yes, Paula, that's the way it is. Well, Clarice always wanted to marry a millionaire. That's the way it is. Where on earth have you been? Oh, I beg your pardon, ma'am, but, but I'm at my wit's end. The whole house is at its wit's end. Alfred, please don't tell them I'm here. I've just come back from my clothes. Yes, but... Alfred, promise me. Oh, all right, very well, ma'am, very well. I want the truth. What's been going on between you and Mr. Andrews? If he were just another man, there might be some excuse. If he even liked you, to be at least honest. But to fall in love with some man that these children paid is bad taste. It's downright depravity. I ought to divorce you. No, Mr. Cormack. You can't divorce me and you can't bowl me out because I'm not your wife. Just let me be a lesson to you. I'm the sort of thing that happens when you start proposing between drinks. Oh, oh, well. You married my sister, and you can't blame her, because, well, you're nice enough to make any woman forget she's got a husband. And you can't blame me, because I was trying to save my sister from jail. Why, you can't even blame Andrews, because she was his wife. So you see, Mr. Cormack, it was all your fault. Everything's going to be all right. Clarice's first marriage is being annulled. But Mr. Cormack, don't ever let a thing like this happen again. And us treating us shameful. The whole lot of us. Just think of what she's done for us. And now she's going. Don't let her. Get down on your knees and beg her to stay. Well, don't sit there doing nothing. Get going, Pa. Uh, hurry up. Uh, Mrs. Cormack, Mrs. Uh, uh, lady. Yeah. Hey, lady. Lady. Lady, look. Lady. What's your name? Paula Kendall. Go on, Steve. Down on your knees to her. Tell her we think she's swell. They think you're swell. Tell her what you think. I think so, too. Tell her we love her. We do, Paula Kendall. We love you. We don't want you to go. We want you to stay here from now on. How about it? Well, you make me awfully happy. Very proud. And I love you, all three. But I can't stay. You see, you're my sister's husband, and you're my sister's children. I don't belong here anymore. Nonsense. I don't even know your sister. You married her. She's the real Mrs. Cormack. What are we going to do? There's nothing any of us can do except, well, maybe help me pack. Goodbye, Paula. Goodbye, Nan. Goodbye, Cook. Goodbye, Louise. Oh, Patricia. I, uh, I wanted you to have this. Oh, darling. It's a little too heavy to carry, Pat. May we send it to you? Yes. Care of the American Medical Research, Haiti. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, Hank. Goodbye, lady. 
Goodbye, Mr. Cormack. Goodbye. I beg pardon, but it's the other Mrs. Cormack to see Mr. Cormack. Clarice, baby! Don't you baby me. You're the man I want to talk to. Yes. Yes, there are a few things I should explain. Well, Michael here has done all the explaining I want to listen to. And of all the outrageous situations I ever stepped into, this is the worst. Well, who are you to talk? My little sweet, I'm your mother. And I'm your wife. And I come home to find my legally married husband carrying on with my own sister clandestinely in the open. Clary. I can explain it. Throw her out, Pop. I'm going to sue you, Mr. Cormack, for a divorce. And I'm going to name my own sister as correspondent. Clarice, if you do that... We'll why... be free. Yes. I'll be free to do as I please. Well, that's none of my business. All I want is to see justice done, and done fast. Mr. Cormack, Michael? just one moment, my angel face. I'm just trying to explain to Mr. Cormack that out in Belmont he owns half a horse. Boss, Miss Patricia. Michael. Just like a poodle. <laughs> 